subscribe and hit that bell icon to be notified about the highlights of India's smartest podcast, The Randy Show. This is TRS Clips. Well, that is an entirely different possibility. <laughs> we don't know if we can actually travel to a different universe because we don't even know how big our own universe is. Mm. The visible universe is a certain size. The universe is 13.8 or 9 billion years old. And the visible universe has a radius of about uh, 90 billion light years. Mm. But the actual universe may be much larger than, than that. It may even be infinite. We have no, no clue. So... about other universes we would be able to explore them only if we can explore our own universe but mm. that itself is not possible because the universe is expanding mm. and the expansion of the universe is making certain parts of it inaccessible because the further you go away from earth the further the space time is expanding <laughs> and at some point in time it ex- it's expanding faster than the speed of light wow so because of that it may not be possible to even do that Mm. Do you think that you're what like how old are you? Sir? I'm 44. 44. So do you think by the time you're 84, like 40 years from now, we would have made significant strides in all these kind of things that we're speaking of, or at least some of them? I hope that we colonize Mars by that time. I mean, not colonize, but we we travel to Mars and we establish a foothold over there. But interstellar travel, I don't think it's going to be possible anytime soon. Mm. At least in the next hundred years, we are just uh, taking baby steps right now. Mm. See, what we have is chemical rockets. chemical rockets are very very rudimentary machines we need a lot of chemistry a lot of chemicals and they are very unstable they can explode at any time so it's a very difficult and delicate operation just to put a human being into orbit hmm. or to send somebody to to earth or mars at hmm. most but uh, to have the technology to go beyond the solar system or beyond the galaxy is going to re- re- require a whole different kind of physics hmm. and a whole different kind of technology that we don't have right now got it and it's primarily about powering uh the existing machinery that we have so we probably have the machinery but we don't have the power we need immense amount of amounts of power to mm. go beyond the distances that we are talking about got it and uh, chemical rockets are not going to fit that bill because first of all they're too slow and they require a lot of fuel mm. so ideally what you want is something like the annihilation of dark matter or uh, i would say the annihilation of antimatter with matter so that is a very pure form of energy what what does the, what is antimatter sir okay but first explain what matter is then explain what antimatter so the matter that is around us is the ordinary matter but we know that there are anti protons anti uh, positrons anti electrons and neutrons so if you cre- create an atom with anti protons and uh, and positrons that's in it's an anti atom Okay. So for example hydrogen it has one proton in the nucleus and it has an electron that goes around the proton. Mm. That's the simplest uh, atom that we have. Now instead of the proton if we take an anti proton and we put a positron around that that's an anti hydrogen atom. Okay. Now, now the property of antimatter is that if it comes in contact with ordinary matter it instantaneously annihilates and it releases a huge amount of energy. antimatter releases energy. So say that the, ne- the negative hydrogen the antimatter hydrogen meets the positive hydrogen uh there's an explosion you're saying yes they they become just pure energy both of them both of them they okay. they spontaneously annihilate each other and this is like okay so basically before the atom bomb was created someone einstein figured out how to create an ant- atom bomb how to create nuclear energy and then the application of that was, was the atom bomb now yeah. because of advancements in particle physics people have figured that oh wow now this can happen this is also yeah. another way of creating energy and this is a huge amount of energy Therefore, maybe there are applications like interstellar travel. If we can figure out how to store antimatter, for example, because the okay. moment antimatter is exposed to the to the atmosphere, it will explode, oh. it will annihilate. Got it. So we have to keep it in a perfect vacuum. If even one molecule of oxygen or air comes in contact with it, it's going to create an explosion. How big is the explosion? Uh, I depends on the energy that is, that is inside the uh, uh, the molecule. For example, a proton has a certain amount of energy, five hundred eleven MeV. mega electron volts electron has a certain amount of energy so it depends on how much antimatter comes in contact with ordinary matter and we can calculate the amount of the explosion but, but is the, it is it bigger than a atom bomb yeah it could easily be bigger than atom uh, an atom bomb it can be a very very powerful source of energy if we can use it right mm. so we need a certain kind of engineering which has not been invented yet mm. to store it and then make it react with matter in a certain way 